Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. So today what I wanted to do is provide uh, some thoughts on Broken Arrow deck building, and in particular a support role. So if you're newer to the game, I think this is really helpful, right? This really focuses on anti-air, air and artillery support. In the current meta and the playtest, you see a lot of early game air spam. And so having a deck that's built out the right way will really allow you to support your teammates. And then if you're playing that support role, it lets them focus on other things and not worry so much about getting harassed and destroyed by the enemy's air and artillery. You're basically buying your teammates freedom of maneuver. So what I'm going to do is go through a couple of different US decks, two different specializations, show you what I've chosen and why, and then we can talk about it on the back end. Okay, so starting with an air and armored specialty deck, um, like I talked about in my previous video, in my mind, the most important thing being a support player is artillery and anti-air, right? So starting in support column, what I have obviously resupply. The Patriot Pack 2 is the most important thing here. Um, I went with the four missile package because then you have to recruit it less. Not worried about self-defense, not worried about armor. You want to keep it as cheap as possible. At 180 apiece, you can get these out immediately, which you need to in the current air spam meta. Um, in addition, I have some of these shore ads. Uh, fully upgraded, right, with the Stingers, uh, the Bus 3 Reactive Armor Upgraded Engine. These are good against helicopters. They have a huge right, magazine for Stingers. So um, really useful in supporting your teammates as you get closer to the front, plus with the 30 millimeter, they can actually defend themselves. Then I have the ATACMs, right? These are really supply hungry. Um, each one can launch uh, two missiles before it has to resupply, and it takes forever, so I recommend uh, setting something up where you can shoot, move back, resupply, and then move to another location before you shoot again. Um, with these, it's important to note that the S300 and the Patriot can shoot down the ATACMs, but if you use this in conjunction with your teammates, they're really good for counter-battering those heavy uh, anti-air, and then it'll give your teammates that air superiority that they need to use uh, airstrikes. And then finally, I've got the, uh, the Iron Thunder self-propelled howitzer here as well. This tube artillery, also really good. Much shorter range, getting the uh, the Iron Thunder upgrade increases the range to 500. Again, good for knocking down anti-air systems, especially the more close range ones, targeting supply depots, etc. Things that you can do to make life easier for your teammates. Then getting into the, uh, the air assets, right? So the first thing I have is a Strike Eagle set up with uh, rock eye clusters. I've left the center line empty. I think 12 rock eye cluster bombs is plenty for dealing with most armored vehicles if you get a good strike. Um, and re eliminating the center line saves you some requisition points uh, and helps you come out ahead. The Amram, um, I chose this package. You could go lighter with this. I don't think you need the sidewinders. I'm using this Strike Eagle uh, to come in, drop bombs, and get out. The Amrams will help protect it against other uh, aircraft. Um, but you don't necessarily need the sidewinders because that's an anti-helicopter build. Designation pod, I don't have it here, right? Because again, this is a get in and get out weapon system. Next is the Lancer, right? And I've got these air launch cruise missiles as my primary. Um, I've been having issues with the, uh, the laser designated uh, weapons. So I'm going with the cruise missiles because you can launch them on a point, kind of like artillery. This is something good that you can salvo in. Uh, you bring the Lancer in, you keep it to the back, Right? You have to have know where your targets are, but you can really ripple off a lot of these cruise missiles relatively quickly. Send the Lancer back to base for a refund. If you time that with an ATACM shot, you can do a lot of damage to your enemy's air defense and artillery before they know it hit them. And then here at 15 Cs, I have these set up in a purely air defense role, right? Internal fuel, trying to keep the cost down, right? And then I've got four Sidewinders and four Amrams. That's to give it multi-role anti-air capability. Again, this is really useful early on if the uh, the enemy air spams. Um, you can get your Patriots out, set them up right away, and then bring these F-15Cs on, right? And then immediately start to push back. If you do it right and you layer your, your air correctly, you can get an early points advantage while everything else in the ground battle is taking shape. And then on the other side of things, the Global Hawk and the, the MQ-1C Great Eagle are really important. Right, that allows you to that that recce is really uh, critical for your teammates spotting for strikes, etc. Um, as you can see, I'm pretty light 
on infantry here. I went deliberately light so I could go over on some of these other columns. Um, I did want the tow two bravos. These are useful. You can just set up ambush positions in the trees if you've got some spare requisition. But again, that's not the focus of this build. And then finally, vehicles. I've got an assortment of vehicles here. Um, if we need to make a ground push or if I need to support there, like if I'm able to keep my ATACMs and my, my Patriots alive for a long time, um, then I'm not necessarily, I can actually get some maneuver units out. The last thing I'll highlight, um, I've been experimenting with the Kiowas. I really like these. I'm a big fan of the Optronic Mass because of, it basically doubles your sensor range there. And then two Stingers and two Hellfires. The Stingers are really useful if you come across other helicopters, right? You can challenge them, force them away. Um, and then with the long bows, right now the way I have this built out is the inner pylons have the APKWS guided rockets and the uh, the Hellfires on the outer pylons, right? It's a little bit of a mixed build, um, good at anti-infantry, anti-vehicle. Um, I'm not sold on this build yet, so if you have any thoughts uh, or pointers on how to better use the Apache, uh, I'm all about it. Okay, and now for a slightly different take on this. Instead, I'm going to go for Armored and Marine Corps. Right, so it changes your air uh, a little bit and that you don't have access to the B1 or the F-15s. But the nice thing about this is by keeping armored in, you still get access to the Patriot Pack 2 uh, and the Iron Thunder and the ATACMs. And now with the Marine Corps side of it, you get the LAV for air defense, which I actually like slightly better than the Bradley linebacker. And then the PIV adds, which I'm basically using to fill out some spare uh, space I had in the deck. But keeping these close to the Patriots can provide them some point defense, uh, which is a technique that was uh, passed to me earlier. Then on the air side, this is where it gets really interesting. So this EA-6B, I have two of them and they're outfitted with four harms each. This can be really helpful if the enemy is doing a really good job of putting up Patriots or S-300s everywhere. These guys, if you, you got to kind of save up, but you bring them on at the same time, have them come in and salvo uh, their harms at the enemy's radar. Right? And then you at least force them to shut down, which will, if you coordinate with your teammates and time it, um, you can come in and force the enemy uh, to kind of change their tactics or give up uh, air superiority to you. I've got an F-35 here with a couple of AMRAMs for air superiority, right? D choosing this over the F-18C, one, because it's cheaper, and two, because of the additional electronic countermeasures, give it a little bit of additional survivability. Um, and then for the F-18D here, now, I like the F-18C and the, the AIM-147, right, the standoff anti-air missile, but based on the way this is built out, I wanted to have two Prowlers and I wanted to have this uh, 18D. So this has four Mavericks, and so this is really useful if there's an enemy armored column coming up, right? In the previous build, we used the Strike Eagle with the cluster munitions, but that's really imprecise. This, if you have clear line of sight, you can knock out four vehicles and then bounce out of there, and it still has the two AMRAMs to defend itself. So I like this build as well. Not as potent at range, because you don't have the B1, you don't have the Strike Eagle, but you can do a little bit more to suppress enemy air defenses with this build. Now, as you can see up here, some changes. The downside to this is you don't have any of the airborne reconnaissance. Instead, you have access to the Marine Corps reconnaissance. They're still potent units. I have these Cav Scouts with an upgraded Bradley uh, which I'll highlight here, mainly because this doubles as Cav Scouts in the building with the Javelins, and then you also get uh, this upgraded Bradley that you can bring in and use to support your ground forces and maybe push. Here, I've combined the Tow 2 Bravo team, right, with some uh, mechanized riflemen with Stingers, and then just Marines to throw in buildings and, and hold ground there. Vehicles, I have a, an arrangement of tanks fully kitted out, and then the lav, the AT lav here with the modernized setup, the armor, and the smoke. You know, whenever possible, you should upgrade smoke on your vehicles. It just gives you that extra survivability and ability to micro away from poor engagements. And then the last thing here in this build that's different um, are, are the helicopters. So I've got uh, the Viper here, which is set up similarly, similarly to the longbow from the previous one, although it comes with sidewinders, right? And then the last thing uh, on this side is I have an MV-22 Osprey. I do find that like, especially with the Patriot and the ATACMs, supply becomes an issue. So using an Osprey to rapidly move and unload supply and then being able to refund it every time you send it back to base uh, is really helpful for keeping your guns and your missile launchers up and shooting. So I mentioned this when we were talking about the deck build, but the basic way you want to play this 
you got to understand your enemy most likely is going to spam a bunch of air units and airdrop units early in the game. So during the deployment phase, you want to pull your Patriots out early, right? And set them up so they drive onto the field at the most central spawn point or the, the most key spawn point for your team, right? And then you want to pull your anti-air aircraft and have them ready to deploy as well. So with the airborne build, that's the, uh, the F-15Cs. And with the Marine Corps build, that's the F-35 and the F-18. Once you've got that set up, then you can kind of adjust your build however, el however else you might want, depending on how much requisition you have left. As soon as the game starts, your Patriots get out, move them separately from each other. They shouldn't be right next to each other and then have them set up the radar. Then go hunting for the enemy's aircraft. Try to keep your guys together. Try to draw the enemy's aircraft in towards the Patriots. Remember, you have uh, four missiles per launcher, so they should do a fair amount of work. And then honestly, the next thing you're going to need is a supply run to resupply them. Don't forget, anytime you launch with a Patriot S300 um, or the ATACMs, any of these super high-end systems that are vulnerable to counter battery fire, make sure once you launch and the immediate threat is cleared, you turn off the radar, you relocate them, you resupply them, uh, and then you reset them back up. It can be really frustrating for your enemy if you're constantly uh, firing and moving, resupplying, firing, moving, resupplying, etc. And then the last thing, it can be really tempting uh, to bring your supplies right up uh, to your systems, whether it's the Patriot, especially the ATACMs, because it goes through supply like crazy. The downside is if the enemy hits that supply depot, it's going to go up uh, in flames, it's going to go big, right? Um, and so that'll cost you your system as well. But keep in mind, if you're smart, if you spot an enemy supply depot, that can be a prime shot for your own ATACMs, for your own artillery, uh, and inflict some damage on the enemy that way. Anyway, hope this is helpful. Uh, please continue the conversation in the comments below. I'm learning a lot uh, just kind of reading what everyone's doing, everyone's trying. If you got any suggestions, throw them out here. Um, that's it for this one. I'll see y'all in the next one.